Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today is that second Bible review that I mentioned in the previous Bible review that I did, and that is going to be on this gorgeous Bible here. It's called the Fisher of Men Bible. It is produced by Homan, and this Bible was actually first written in Spanish, and then they translated it into English. This is the HCSB translation. You can buy it in the CSB, which is just the updated version from the HCSB. And I am so excited to share this with you guys. Now, you guys know that I received this at my ordination service um, as a gift from my leaders. And I had given it to my pastor because, you know, she had to sign it. And it took like two weeks to get it back. Almost a month, pretty much, to get it back <laughs> from her. So, yes, we are going to dive in. But here's what it looks like. You can get the paperback, which is what I have. They gifted us the paperback. Um, but it does come in a hardcover with the same design on it and then a soft leather touch, which is kind of navy blue. So you have those options for your for you to get. I don't remember the pricing, honestly. I know that it's less than $25, so I will leave links to um, Amazon because I don't think this is on ChristianBook.com anymore. So I'm going to post all the links to Amazon down below. But um, yeah, here is the Bible. And um, let's just look at the back real quick. So it says, what does the Bible say about forgiveness and thanksgiving? What does it say about loneliness and depression? What verse would you use to share your faith and answer or answer, sorry, a difficult question about other world religions? Where in the Bible would you find answers about your purpose in life? We know the word of God has answers to all these topics and so many more, but oftentimes we don't know where to find them. The Fisher of Men Bible allows you to easily find what God's word says about counseling, devotion, church, apologetics, evangelism, and the Christian doctrine. The Fisher of Men Bible is one of a kind tool that is designed to help you navigate through the word of God for almost any situation or topic or of conversation. It features 26 page guide that is divided into six main themes, which is counseling, devotion, evangelism, church, Christian doctrine and apologetics from felt need. I'm sorry. What does it say? <laughs> Let me just bring this up so I can actually read that better. From felt need topics such as marriage, finances, and forgiveness to spiritual growth topics like apologetics and Christian doctrine, the Fisher of Men Bible guides you to the first verse in a chain of a particular topic. There you will find a brief commentary as well as the second reference verse in the chain. Most chains have four to five Bible verses. So this, in a sense, is kind of like the... Thompson Chain Reference Bible, as well as a commentary Bible, but it's geared toward evangelizing, which I think is so awesome. So I'm so glad that this was translated from Spanish to English. So opening up, you get your presentation page, and I just covered up my name. Um, a lot of you guys know my name, but for those of you who don't, I don't always like to put my actual legal name on camera. So it just says, presented to evangelists from my church, which is Flight to Freedom Worship Center, and then the date was August 23rd, 2019. The pastor of administration slash youth pastor, who's also, I call him my brother, um, he signed it for me. I did get yelled at, just a little bit reprimanded for filling this portion out because my pastor was supposed to do that. On this page, I have my bishop's signature, who is like my dad. I love him so much. So um, he wrote something for me. And then you get some motivation for prayer. So you have evangelism, two pages of that. Discipleship. Ministry. I think that was it. Yeah. So it says, fishing always begins at the thematic index on page 11, which we'll get to that. Like I said, the Fisher of Men Bible is evangelism, discipleship, and ministry. It was edited by Dr. Luis Angel Diaz Pavon, and the editorial committee are these people, which I don't want to butcher their names. But as you can see, they're all Spanish speakers. So like I said, it comes in a printed hardcover and a soft cover. So that's the ISBN information for you there. You go into the reason for the Bible, which are just some words from the general editor. And then you go into the user guide. So let me just fix the camera, bring you guys a little closer so you guys can see. Okay, so here is the user guide. And it basically tells you an overall guide to the Bible. So the different sections, which are apologetics. Um, they give direct answers to false beliefs held by cults and other religions. Evangelism, which is specific verses for sharing Christ with any person. 
church, which are tips for those that carry out a role in ministry. Devotion, which is a guidance for our relationship with God in specific circumstances. Christian doctrine, which is explanations of the foundations of the Christian faith. And counseling, which is pertinent points for ministering to those in need of help. Um, and they all have symbols. So apologetics is a wave. Evangelism is a cross with, I guess, an arrow. Church is a boat. Devotion is fire. Christian doctrine is kind of like this net kind of thing. And then a heart for counseling. Then you have a section called Deeper Waters, which is basically like essential terms. And this basically shows you how to use a Bible, how the chain references work and things like that. So the example here is um, for Isaiah 42 and 5 is, are we the product of evolution? So you would look up Isaiah 42, 5 and the highlighted section would be that verse. After you go there, you would then go to the footnote. They call it a footnote, but I personally just call it commentary because footnotes are separated. Um, so you would go to the commentary section, which would then give you the little logo, which is the way for apologetics. It would tell you the verse, what it is, and give you some information. From there, it will also say, see also another verse. And then you would go to the commentary section for that verse. And it'll keep going on and on like that. So then that would give you something else, which would then give you something else, okay? That's how that works. So then here is a thematic index, which basically gives you those different sections broken down with their questions and things like that. So the first one is going to be the apologetic section. And this one is basically the defense of the Christian faith, the major doctrines um, of sex and religions. So you have archaeology, which I think is great that they have that. You have atheism. And in each section, you have questions that might be asked, okay? See that. Then you have Buddhism, Catholicism, the Christian science. And I mean, this is like really well done. Then you have, I think it's pronounced Nocticism. <laughs> you have this, which is an Indian sect. I cannot pronounce that, but it's an Indian sect established in America in 1965. Hinduism, Islam. Jehovah Witnesses. And these are just like questions that they would ask. So like going back for Islam. Let's see. Did Allah allow his prophet Jesus to be crucified? Um, did Jesus really raise from the dead? Is the Quran God's highest revelation thus replaces every other religion? Is the Quran the only unadulterated word of God? Um, for Jehovah Witnesses, you have our Watchtower Publications, the sole authority over the Bible. Did Christ's second coming occur in 1914? Does hell really exist? Things like that. Judaism, um, is Jesus actually the Messiah? Is salvation attained by complying with the Mosaic Law? Mormonism, um, which is, are the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit three separate gods? Are there many gods? Can we become gods? Did Mary conceive Jesus from the God Adam, so just quite like literally questions people really, I guess, ask. Um, going on, you have New Age. Do all religions lead to the same place? Does hell really exist? Will there be a final judgment? Postmodernism. This is, um, I don't know what that is, but it talks about that. <laughs> Some more stuff. Satanism, Scientology. So it really just goes in depth. I am not really um, keen on apologetics. I've heard it before. don't really understand it. So I definitely am glad that this is included because I can now go do my research on apologetics. Um, spiritism. Meditation. And not just, this is transcendental meditation. I think that's what it says. Unification churches or the Moonies. And witchcraft and then Zen Buddhism. Next, you then have the Christian doctrine section, which is basically the main aspects of Christian faith. So angels, gift of the spirit, God, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, man, um, salvation, Satan, sin, the church, the fruit of the spirits, and then the word of God. Moving on, you then have the counseling section, which talks about um, addictions, family, personal conflicts. And as you can see, when under each, you have different things. So for addiction, they really focus on drugs, alcohol, games, and gambling. Family, they talk about abortion, adultery, authority, divorce, and marriage. Personal conflicts are like anger, wrath, anxiety, depression, envy, things like that. And they're giving you the actual references to go to for scriptures. So you have, a, you have quite a lot here. 
I like this question. Are homosexuals born or made? Biblical warnings. Can homosexuals change? Um, and then it tells you the, the consequences for like Sodom and Gomorrah and then Gibba. I think that's how you say that. Gibba? Gibba. Um, finances. About asking God for it. Dealing with financial challenges. Foresight and good judgment. Generosity and mercy. Honoring God with your finances. How to avoid debt. Low self-esteem. Um there is security in God and things like that. Next, you have the devotion section, which is a primary resource of the Christian faith. My phone just went off, so let's put that on silent. <laughs> um, which talks about fasting, praise, prayer. And then in prayer, they break that down further into like selected prayers, such as David, Habakkuk, Hezekiah, Jabaz, which we all know the Jabaz, which is enlarged my territory, from Solomon and... I don't know what that is. If you guys know, let me know. Um, the significant features of believing, having humility, doing it in Jesus' name, doing it in private and persevering. The types. Um, what is it? And then you have reading the word, thanksgiving, and worship. For evangelism, um, this is about sharing the gospel of you know Jesus. And this is the one that I think I'm going to start looking into first. Obviously, I'm an evangelist. Um, and I really just want to fully get a grasp on what evangelism is. Now, I definitely had to know that prior to being an evangelist. Um, I did a, a video not too long ago talking about what an evangelist... Well, not what an evangelist is, but just my final thoughts. I will have a more in-depth video coming exactly as to what an evangelist is and what they do. But um, I just like this per this this section... Um, it talks about the call and purpose, how to evangelize. And then the last section is the church section, which is the family of God in action, the Holy Spirit in the church, the house of God, the people of God, and then what it is. Um, then you get your introduction into the Holman Christian Standard Bible, which is the HCSB. Again, this is the outdated version. The new version is the CSB. It just takes out the H, but I have both. I don't mind both. So you can get into that. Then you get your contents here, which tells you where everything is. There are articles for each of the sections, which I will show you guys. And then you have your Old Testament and New Testament. So then you dive into your Old Testament, um, starting off with Genesis. And what I like is that this does not include any of those kind of um, introductory paragraphs to what each book is. You should pretty much know. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, this first page has a lot on the different sections. Um, trying to really get this to focus a little bit better. Hopefully that's better. Um, so diving in, you have Genesis 1 verses 1 through 3. And um, you can see um, the section is highlighted. So therefore, th because these verses are highlighted, you will come to the bottom. They call this footnotes, but I don't call this footnotes because they actually have a footnote section here. I call this commentary, but they call it footnotes in the Bible. But um, coming down to the bottom, you then see all of the information for this highlighted section. So verse 1 and 2 has two different apologetic notes. Um, verse 1 and 31 has an evangelism note. And then verse 3 has um, a note for apologetics. Going over here, you then see the deeper waters. So basically what deeper waters is, is they pull out specific words from verses to give you a more in-depth definition. Um Sometimes I think they give you the Hebrew or Greek, but I don't think they really do that most often time. But um, for this part, it says deeper water. So you see God. So um, here we have deeper waters. So you have God means Yahweh, Christ, creator, the Lord of the universe, redeemer of his people, author, central theme of the scriptures. And that goes back to Genesis 1 and 1. You have Genesis, which means origin, beginning, source, roots. Oh, I like that. That's actually good. Okay. Um, that goes back to Genesis 1, verse 1, and then 2 and 4. Darkness, which is shadows, night, misery, destruction, death, which goes to Genesis 1 and 2, which I like. And again, here are the footnotes and then the commentary. But again, they call this footnotes for some reason. I have not really gotten in depth into this Bible as of yet, just because I really just wanted to, to wait and do um, a kind of flip through for you guys before i really went in depth i will do an updated video on this bible because i'm definitely going to use this specifically for evangelism but um you can see they really go in and what i like is that they also have the different scriptures or chain references so it will tell you which verses to go to see also genesis 5 3 see also job 37 23 and they tell you what page to go to so you're not like flipping through which is what i like so um you know, I think I'm going to use this when I'm actually studying the book of the Bible. I'm sorry, when I'm actually studying the Bible in order from Genesis to Revelation, because this would help me a lot better than just reading out of a regular Bible. Just saying. 
But um, <laughs> moving on, I believe this is going to be Joshua. So I came to Joshua because we know um, Joshua, God really basically was speaking to him. Um, and then also we understand this is when Joshua was sending the spies. So I just wanted to see what they thought of. And um, for 8 through, I think it is 9, you have apologetics and counseling. And then in Joshua 2, 1 through 3, you talk about evangelism and more evangelism. So I just wanted to really see. So I pinpointed some like important or particular scriptures just to see. So moving on, then you go into your first article. The first article is on apologetics, which is ready to give a defense. So it talks about always being ready, um, a fervent struggle to be complete. Again, I have not read these. I definitely will be reading them because they really just sound interesting and they're pretty, a substantial amount of information in them. The next one is going to be evangelism. Again, another article I definitely need to read. Um, this is the wonder of reconciliation. So reconciliation comes from God. Reconciliation is an experience. Reconciliation is a ministry. Reconciliation is divine work. And then reconciliation is the work of the ambassadors, which I think is pretty good that they have that there. Moving on, I flipped to Esther chapter 4, um, just because I think this is a portion I like when Mordecai was telling um, Esther basically, you know, not to think that she can escape the fate and that if she keeps silent that someone else will bring um, deliverance and stuff, whatnot to her people. So I wanted to see what they had for this. And for this, they basically have evangelism, which I think is great. And it talks about how to evangelize and being a public figure. And there are different types of evangelists. There's public evangelists, there's private evangelists, there are internet evangelist full-time evangelist prophetic evangelist healing evangelist like there are so many different types of evangelists which ugh, so amazing um so i really just wanted to come here and just see what they thought of those specific scriptures from esther moving on i had to go to one of my favorite books in the bible um, my favorite chapter in the bible which is psalms 91 and it's my favorite so i really wanted to see what they thought of it and for psalms 91 they have counseling and christian doctrine which i think is awesome so it's highlighted from verses 1 through 4 and 10 through 12 so 1 through 4 is counseling and it's dealing with personal um, conflicts this one says sexual abuse which i think is really amazing that's probably why i relate a lot to psalms 91 and why i love it um, and then the Christian doctrine for verses 10 through 12, it talks about angels and their role. So that's pretty good. And you have a deeper water section here, which gives you just angel what it is. And it talks about from Psalms 91 um, verse 11. Moving on, you have your next article, which is on the church. It says, Jesus said, I will build my church. So it talks about what the church is, the building of the church, the future of the church and the present of the church, which I think is interesting. So... A lot of great articles in here. Moving forward, I went to my verse of the year, Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3. Just because, I, again, I wanted to see what they thought of it and how they would kind of like apply the scriptures. Hopefully you guys are seeing this well enough. Um, but yeah, for Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3, you have literally nothing but counseling. 43 and 1 is counseling. 43, 2 and 3 is counseling. 43, 2 and 3 is counseling again. And they really focus on personal conflicts. Um, depression, sickness and death, God's intervention and um, recovery. So I think that's interesting. And it goes further to verse four as well, which has some more counseling. Um, and then in verses 10 and 11, right, 10 and 11, yes, they talk about um, the Christian doctrine and apologetics. So that's pretty cool. Moving on, I'm going to Ezekiel because not every page will have any type of um, highlighting that every page will have a commentary sort of section you will automatically have your footnotes but um, you will not have every page highlighted as you can see now you can tell from the camera that this is extremely extremely lightweight paper I mean you can see the shadowing like that is bad very very bad but I don't mind it because it doesn't bother me if I'm in my house studying um, so the next article is going to be on devotion, and it just says a wonderful person. It talks about the Holy Spirit being a person, the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus, the believer in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and evangelism, and the Holy Spirit is definitely crucial in evangelizing. Moving along, we then have the Christian doctrine, which is note for a sound doctrine. So you have the authority of Jesus, a doctrine that is not my own, the doctrine of the apostles. Moving ahead, I went to John. Y'all know I had to do it, right? 
we love John on this channel. John is amazing. And for those of you who have been asking, we are going to get back into Bible study, but we're not going to start back until January 2020. And we will be diving back into the book of John or the gospel according to John. Because I totally forgot we started John. So I'm working on that as like we speak uh, the rest of this year. I'll be working on just restudying the book of John so that we can finish that and then dive into James. Okay. But um, yeah, I wanted to come to John because we love John. I love John so much. And yes. Um, so here it has John verses, John 1 verses 1 through 3, 12, 14, and 18 highlighted. Then you have your deeper water section here. And I mean, you can see this really just talks about apologetics and christian doctrine with one counseling um so that's that then you have your last article here if i'm not mistaken this is the last one and this is counseling the art of good counseling so it talks about the individual's value counseling is a long-standing and vital art counseling is more than just exchanging ideas which is so true oh my god there are so many people out there who believe that just giving it like changing ideas is like counseling and counseling is a lot more than that it is very hands-on it is very personal it is something that is ever-changing um and some people just don't realize that but anyway only the bible which i guess it speaks about how only the bible can really give you um a clear perspective on things and then um the ministry of restoration so then we go to here and the back after revelation you get your deeper water glossary so it's old testament words are in black and the new testament words are in blue so you literally have like all of these words so i mean you talk about almighty altar anointing anoint um to appoint the archangel you have darkened you have desolated you have despondent you have deuteronomy which i think is funny <laughs> that's funny um exodus they give you a definition for that faction fade away for false testimony first fruits you know that's one of the words i've always wanted to know like i know it's like the first of what you get um it's like kind of like the first fruits but i didn't really fully understand the definition so i think that's going to be great but um you have that if i can flip the page all the way to z z you have zeal um and then you have this which is do you know the five principles of eternal life which are creation the fall the fruitless search god's love and then conversion and then at the end you have your hcsb bullet notes and this is something i'm very used to because i do have um their original study bible for women in the hcsb and then i have the updated version and even in the updated version they have this thing which has a bullet so like i'm gonna bring you guys a little closer so you guys can see even better um certain words will have a literal bullet next to it and what happens is when they have a bullet you come to the back back here and um it gives you the information so abyss right here which has a bullet it tells you the bottom bottomless pit this one has gate marked with a bullet point so let's see gate is right here which is the center of community and discussion. So what I'm going to do real quick is actually look for a bullet point in here and then come back to you guys. Okay, so what I did was I came to Judges 2 and 11. I literally had to Google it to figure it out. Yeah, when the first use of the word was, but it was in Judges 2, 11. And um, let me just bring you guys a little closer. So um, 2, 11, it says the Israelites did what was evil in the Lord's sight. They worship the Baals. Um, so you see the little bullet point right there that's when you would go to the back and come back here and it says Baal here obviously it's Baal without the s but it's a fertility god who was the main god of the canaanite religion and the god of rain and thunderstorm it is also the hebrew word meaning lord master owner or husband so that's how that works so throughout the bible there will be sections um that have the bullet points and you literally just come back here if you see a bullet point which i'm pretty used to like i said because i have it in my other bible so they have very different words all the time. And then after that, if I'm not mistaken, yes, after that um, is my first lady's thing to me. She also wrote on that side as well, if you guys can see. So, um, yeah, but I just, I love this Bible so much. I don't really want to use this Bible because it is such a keepsake and I did get this from my ordination. I will use it every now and then, but I think I want to try to get my hands on the, either the hardcover or the leather soft to actually utilize. Um, just because I'm not being, what is the word? I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to like harbor this, but it really does have a lot of sentimental value to me. So, um... You know, I don't want to damage this one, especially since it's paperback. 
I like this Bible. The only thing I don't like is that the pages are extremely thin and there is extreme amount of, sh of shadowing. I'm pretty sure there's going to be an excessive amount of bleed through as well, um, no matter what pen you use. But I would definitely say if you're going to use this, use an archival ink pen like the, um, what is it called? That pen, the Pigma Micron pen. Or if you're going to use highlighters, just stick with the outliners just because those are like kind of the best um, utensils to use in your Bibles. But um, yeah, I, I love this Bible. I definitely, like I said, will have an updated tour of this Bible when I get more in depth into it um, because I am going to use this to restudy the book of John and I'm going to also just do some research on evangelism and apolo apologetics and this stuff um in this bible excuse me can't talk but um yeah i definitely would recommend it but if you do have a problem with how thin the bible pages are and how much you can see through i mean this is like it's it's not yeah it's bad but um i think it's still a useful bible but other than that that is it for this video i will see you guys in the next one if you are not subscribed subscribe and if you are subscribed Hit the little bell to stay notified. Thumbs up this video. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay, guys. So, I literally just recorded the review. Literally. And the day of me recording that video, right after I recorded the video, a few hours later, I got a package in the mail. And I don't like calling you guys subscribers. So I'm going to say a sister from the DOI Sisterhood hit me up on Facebook Messenger and... Um, and well you know she said she wanted to send me something she had got me something and it was something that i said that i wanted from my september i think it was september book haul um i think that was a video and um she wanted to send it to me and hopefully i didn't have it yet so i didn't know what she was talking about because honestly i didn't remember what i was talking about in that video and i didn't want to go back to watch it i wanted it to be a surprise and if you guys see my um reading blog for Oh my god, The Last Man at the End, I did a quick unboxing of it, and um, it was the Leather Touch edition of the Fisher of Men Bible, and you guys know I have this Bible because it was basically a gift after the ordination service for um, me becoming an ordained evangelist, and I didn't want to write in mines because it was paperback, and I wanted to keep it as a keepsake because it had some signatures from my leaders of my ministry, and I just know paperbacks can get destroyed really, really quickly. I mean, my paperback copy of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible is almost, like, demolished, but I've been taping it and stuff like that. So, I really wanted just either the hardcover or the leather touch, and she got me the leather touch, you guys, from Lifeway. And I am, like, so stoked about this. If, again, if you see the reading blog, you would have seen my expression and everything. I have messaged her multiple times. I will definitely be sending her something, because this was, like, totally unexpected. But, you guys, oh my gosh look at this beauty uh hold on because i do have her information still from the tracking let me take that out put that on the side don't need you guys seeing her information but you guys oh my god first of all when i got it i could not stop sniffing it um <laughs> if you are a book nerd you know what it feels like to have like a new bible or a new book and to get that new book smell and because this i believe is faux leather it has that like faux leather smell so i'm a little awkward and a little weird i, I admit that um especially because i have an obsession with books but um this ugh, i'm so like so so excited about this bible and um it is everything and more it is still the same kind of inside detailing i think the only difference is is that on the back of here you get the maps and um they took out the bullet system which i think is weird that they took that out because if i'm not mistaken it's definitely in my csb woman study bible so the bullet system is not in here oddly enough but it's okay because i do have it in the other edition but um yeah it's the same bible i feel like it's a little bit bigger hold on let me compare the two there's definitely a difference i'm gonna take put this to the top so you guys can see it is definitely wider and um longer so that's that um, i'm not sure if the font is the same i feel like it's the same but um i feel like the bleed not the bleed through but the shadowing is a lot more prominent on the paperback than it is with the leather touch you guys can see for yourself on camera um even when i do this you can kind of see the shadowing and if i do it this way on this one you don't see it as much so that's definitely a difference i'm not sure again if the font is the same um, it looks the same to me, 
yeah it i don't know it looks the same but i could be wrong don't know um but yeah pretty much everything in this bible is the same i will say what they did change also in this is that at the top where it has like the thematic index in the paperback it tells you like ap apologetics counseling this one literally just says thematic index throughout the whole which i think is not good so i'm gonna have to put like some sticky tabs or something but in this oh i don't want to show you guys that that's the signature in this version it tells you like the apologetic section which is super long counseling section evangelism section um the church section like it tells you the sections this one literally just says thematic index so i don't know that's the difference but i am so loving this i actually did take this to church with me on sunday yes which i have my bookmark in the scripture that we were reading um we basically read 16 for, for first of all first chronicles 16 verses 1 through 22 and um yeah i use this bible i didn't mark in it as of yet because i don't know how i'm gonna use it yet um i think i'm just gonna use it strictly for what it is as an evangelism bible um and really just go in here to highlight some other points for evangelism and things like that but i'm so excited now to have the leather touch which is really really pretty it is this gorgeous like wave design on the front and the bag is so pretty and um it feels nice so i now have my paper bag which is a keepsake because again i did get this from my ordination service and i did not want to mess it up you guys can also see the difference again here it's like it's a good difference but um i like carrying this around and this has some pretty pretty edging it's not white and it's not really silver it's i mean i guess it's silver but it's like a light silver gilded edge it's so pretty so pretty so thank you again to sierra oh, i love this bible so much i'm loving it i'm loving it i did fill out the information of the the presentation portion with my name her name and when she got it um so i'm like so stoked and a lot of you guys have asked me for my address if you personally want to send me something i'm not gonna like tell you guys no i don't mind it um i don't obviously tell you guys to but if you want my address for some reason and you want to send me something then definitely just hit me up either on facebook through the daughter of increase facebook page or you can just dm me on instagram and i can definitely give you guys my address some of you guys have asked for my numbers i've given my numbers to some of you guys and we communicate through texts. um i don't mind communicating with any of you i love my subscribers i can't believe like i'm almost like 500 away from 3000 it blows my mind like and i know i know i still have to do the 2000 subscriber giveaway it's it's not that i haven't done it obviously that video's posted i just have not picked a winner yet <laughs> don't kill me guys i haven't forgotten so i'm gonna work on that this week i'm gonna pick this the winner and then that will be announced in definitely one of next week's video for sure just a lot of the video footages you guys are seeing are like pre-recorded because i normally record at least two weeks worth of video footage in one week so yeah definitely gonna have that winner announced and when i get to three thousand i'm probably gonna do another um subscriber giveaway because i just my facebook page just got to 400 likes which i it blows my mind so i'm definitely gonna have probably two or three more large um subscriber follower giveaways because my even my instagram account is over a thousand followers now so i truly appreciate it and i love you guys so much again thank you so much to Ciara. this video has been long-winded and i don't want to keep going so i will see you guys in the next video bye